under Joe Biden, the world has become vastly more dangerous, and there is no greater danger than the deadly menace of nuclear weapons and hypersonic missiles. Hypersonic missiles move at many times the speed of sound and six times faster than current missiles. Armed with nuclear weapons, they could annihilate entire cities and even countries within minutes. And we cannot let this happen. If you take a look right now, the nuclear word is being mentioned all the time. This is a word that you're not allowed to use. It was never used during the Trump administration, but now other countries are using that word against us because they have no respect for our leadership. World War III would be a catastrophe unlike any other. This would make World War I and World War II like very small battles. The best way to ensure that such a conflict never happens is to be prepared with unmatched technology and unrivaled strength. To this end, when I'm Commander-in-Chief, which we did an awfully good job at rebuilding our military, we rebuilt the entire military, once again, I will work with Congress and our great military leaders, not the ones you see on television. I don't consider them leaders. But we're going to work with them to build a state-of-the-art, next-generation missile defense shield. Just as Israel is now protected by the Iron Dome, a dream once thought impossible, America must have an impenetrable dome to protect our people. We worked with Israel to develop that dome. They relied on us, not just them. They relied on us. We have technology that's unsurpassed, but our past leaders haven't really wanted to use it. I rebuilt our military at a level that nobody thought possible, but we have to now go that further step. We must be able to defend our homeland, our allies, and our military assets around the world from the threat of hypersonic missiles, no matter where they are launched from. Our adversaries must understand that they, not the United States, will be totally destroyed if they ever dared to launch missiles against our homeland. The Space Force, which was inaugurated under my leadership, will have a very vital role to play. It was such an important thing we did. The Democrats fought us all the way, but we got it passed. First time in 79 years, a new force. Just as I rebuilt our military, especially our nuclear capabilities, I will build the shield to defend America from missile attack. We will have a peace through strength. And that's what we had. And we had no wars during the Trump administration. We had no wars. Remember that. Because we were strong. The other side knew it. And they didn't want to play games. They didn't want to mess around. Thank you very much. Through weakness and incompetence, Joe Biden has brought us to the brink of World War III. We're at the brink of World War III, just in case anybody doesn't know it. As President, I will bring back peace through strength. Peace through strength would have never happened. If I was President, there would not have been a war with Russia in Ukraine. Zero chance. And Lindsay would be happy with that. That's better than any alternative. Wouldn't have happened. And I will say this, even now, despite tremendous loss of lives and destruction of much of that country, I would have a peace deal negotiated within 24 hours. You could make a peace deal. You could make a deal for both right now, 24 hours. That deal could be done. That deal is waiting to be done, but there's nobody to do it. To protect Americans from the threat of hypersonic missiles and nuclear weapons, I will build state-of-the-art next-generation missile defense shields. And just as I rebuilt our military, we totally rebuilt our military. Unfortunately, we gave 85 billion of it to the Taliban. How was that? Was that a good deal? We took the military out first, and then, and we left Bagram. How about leaving Bagram? One of, I think, the biggest Air Force base in the world. We left Bagram. And you know who's occupying Bagram right now? China. And I didn't care about Bagram from Afghanistan. It's one hour away from where China makes its nuclear weapons. And we left. We gave it to them. We, we should have never left that. You agree with that? Amen. You agree with that? Everybody who's intelligent agrees. We should have kept it. We left. By the dark of night, we left the lights on, and we left the dogs behind, you know? The dog lovers are saying, what happened to the dogs? We had a lot of dogs. We left the dogs behind. They don't like to say that, but that's what happened. But we left 
And I don't think the Taliban's too good with dogs, right? I don't think I don't think they have that loving feeling for dogs. But I'll build the shield, and the workers and the service members of your state will be at the heart of that action. You'll be building it, and you'll be manufacturing it, and you'll be doing a lot because a lot gets done in your state, and a lot gets done in your state because of me and because of these gentlemen coming to me and say, can we do it in South Carolina? And I'd say yes every time, right, Henry? I'd say yes every time. World War III has never been closer than it is right now. We need to clean house of all of the warmongers and America last globalists in the deep state, the Pentagon, the State Department, and the national security industrial complex. One of the reasons I was the only president in generations who didn't start a war is that I was the only president who rejected the catastrophic advice of many of Washington's generals, bureaucrats, and the so-called diplomats who only know how to get us into conflict, but they don't know how to get us out. For decades, we've had the very same people, such as Victoria Nuland and many others just like her, obsessed with pushing Ukraine toward NATO, not to mention the State Department support for uprisings in Ukraine. These people have been seeking confrontation for a long time, much like the case in Iraq and other parts of the world. And now, we're teetering on the brink of World War III. And a lot of people don't see it, but I see it. And I've been right about a lot of things. They all say Trump's been right about everything. None of this excuses in any way the outrageous and horrible invasion of Ukraine one year ago, which would have never happened if I was your president. Not even a little chance. But it does mean that here in America, we need to get rid of the corrupt globalist establishment that has botched every major foreign policy decision for decades. And that includes President Biden, whose own people said he's never made a good decision when it comes to looking at other countries and looking at wars. We have to replace them with people who support American interests. Over our four years in the White House, we made incredible progress in putting the America last contingent aside and bringing the world to peace. And now, we're going to complete the mission. The State Department, Pentagon, and National Security Establishment will be a very different place by the end of my administration. In fact, just into my administration, it'll be a very different place. And it'll get things done, just like I did four years ago. We never had it so good. We'll also stop the lobbyists and the big defense contractors from going in and pushing our senior military and national security officials toward conflict, only to reward them when they retire with lucrative jobs, getting paid millions and millions of dollars. Take a look at the globalist warmonger donors backing our opponents. That's because they're candidates of war. I am the president who delivers peace, and it's peace through strength. There was a reason we had no conflict. There was a reason we didn't get into wars, because other countries respected us. I entirely built all right from the beginning, rebuilt our military. It's a big reason for that. They didn't want to mess around with the United States, and now they're laughing at us. We could end the Ukraine conflict in 24 hours with the right leadership. At the end of my next four years, the warmongers and frauds and failures of the senior ranks of our government will all be gone, and we will have a new group of competent national security officials who believe in defending America's vital interests above all else. Thank you very much. This is the most dangerous time in the history of our country. World War III is looming like never before in the very dark and murky background. Lack of leadership is solely responsible for this unprecedented danger to our beautiful USA, and likewise, to the world itself. Hopeless Joe Biden is leading us into oblivion. We cannot let it happen. We have to take back the White House, or our country is doomed. Thank you very much. What that is, the Great Depression. We have a country that's a mess, but more importantly, it's a, a world that's in serious trouble because we have such an impact on the world. We lead the world, or we should, but we're not leading it anymore. When you see that, and you see Saudi Arabia made a deal with Iran, and they made it through China. 
Not through the United States. Who would have thought of that one? Who would have thought Saudi Arabia? I, and I said this two years ago. I said, you know, if they keep going like this, Saudi Arabia is going to get together with Iran through China, and China is going to control that whole situation. It should have been done through us. We could have had that done so easily. These things are unprecedented. Things are happening that are unprecedented. The Biden administration has driven Russia right into the arms of China, something that is unacceptable. When you're a child studying history, the one thing you learn is you never want Russia and China to get together and form an alliance. Biden has done that. They have a big, beautiful alliance right now. And they've driven Russia right into the arms of China, like, like taking candy from a baby. It was for China. It was very easy. We also have the Iran problem, and I would have had that done very quickly because they were in bad shape financially. Now they're rich again. I told China, if you want to buy oil from them, that's fine, but you're not going to do any more business with the United States. And uh, they said, we will not buy oil from them. They didn't. And we were in a position where we could have made a great deal and made a deal for them, too. Made a deal for everybody to keep the world safe. But uh, when I left, all of a sudden, China went back and started paying a fortune for the oil, and they're rich now. Uh, Iran is very rich now, and it's a much different situation than it was. Iran was ready. They were totally ready to make a deal. Then we had a bad election, really bad, and we're in a position now that we have problems that I don't think we've ever had a more dangerous time for this country and for the world. I don't think there's ever been — again, it has to do with weaponry, but I don't believe there has ever been a time like we're in right now. What they've done to our country in two years is unthinkable. It's unthinkable. Standing before you today, I am the only candidate who can make this promise. I will prevent World War III, because I really believe you're going to have World War III. Because I believe you're going to have it. You know, thank you. You know, I saw outside somebody was wearing cap. Trump was right about everything. I hate to say it, it's true. Germany with the pipeline. I said, what are you doing? The German delegation during the United Nations speech, my speech, they were laughing. They thought it was so funny. A year later, Trump was right about that one. Germany is now, you know what Germany is doing? Building coal plants all over the place as fast as they can. That didn't work out too well. But I was the one that exposed Nord Stream 2. It's called Nord Stream 2, a pipeline from Russia to Germany, but other parts of Europe going to supply. And I said, what are you people doing? And remember, I gave the white flag of surrender. I sent it over to Angela Merkel. She said, but why, but why do you send this to me? I said, because you will be surrendering in a certain period of time. Nobody knew it was going to be in two years. But you will be, you've had many wars with Russia. They've been big wars. You cannot get 85% of your energy from Russia. You got to find other sources. But they, uh, they thought it was so funny. Now they say Trump was right about that one, too. But every step of the way, we will be opposed by the corrupt warmongers and neocons and globalists and communists and all of the other menacing forces that have been trying to take us down with hoaxes and witch hunts. And they've been trying to do anything they can to stop us. It's called Make America Great Again. You know. MAGA. They'd say MAGA, MAGA, MAGA. They hate to use the, what it means. The term is simple. It's make America great again. There's nothing wrong with it. We have never been closer to World War III than we are today under Joe Biden. A global conflict between nuclear armed powers would mean death and destruction on a scale unmatched in human history. It would be nuclear Armageddon. Nothing is more important than avoiding that nightmare. We will avoid it, but we need new leadership. Every day this proxy battle in Ukraine continues, we risk global war. We must be absolutely clear that our objective is to immediately have a total secession 
of hostilities. All shooting has to stop. This is the central issue. We need peace without delay. In addition, there must also be a complete commitment to dismantling the entire globalist neocon establishment that is perpetually dragging us into endless wars, pretending to fight for freedom and democracy abroad, while they turn us into a third world country and a third world dictatorship right here at home. The State Department, the defense bureaucracy, the intelligence services, and all of the rest need to be completely overhauled and reconstituted to fire the deep staters and put America first. We have to put America first. Finally, we have to finish the process we began under my administration of fundamentally reevaluating NATO's purpose and NATO's mission. Our foreign policy establishment keeps trying to pull the world into conflict with a nuclear-armed Russia based on the lie that Russia represents our greatest threat. But the greatest threat to Western civilization today is not Russia. It's probably, more than anything else, ourselves and some of the horrible USA-hating people that represent us. It's the abolition of our national borders. It's the failure to police our own cities. It's the destruction of the rule of law from within. It's the collapse of the nuclear family and fertility rates like nobody can believe is happening. It's the Marxists who would have us become a godless nation worshiping at the altar of race and gender and environment. And it's the globalist class that has made us totally dependent on China and other foreign countries that basically hate us. These globalists want to squander all of America's strength, blood, and treasure, chasing monsters and phantoms overseas while keeping us distracted from the havoc they're creating right here at home. These forces are doing more damage to America than Russia and China could ever have dreamed. Evicting this sick and corrupt establishment is the monumental task for the next president. And I am the only one who can do it. I'm the only one that can get the job done. I know exactly what has to be done. It's an insult to our country, as the world is already laughing at us for so many other reasons, like our open borders, our incompetent withdrawal from Afghanistan, where we left behind American citizens, $85 billion worth of the best military equipment in the world, lost 13 magnificent young lives and far too many to mention that are so badly hurt with the loss of arms and legs and facial obliteration. The most embarrassing time in our country's history, in my opinion. Then our give up on energy independence and even energy dominance. We're going to be dominant within six months, more than any other nation times two. We had this all just three years ago, our raging crime statistics. If you look in Democrat-run cities, numbers the likes of which we have never seen before, the open threats by various countries of the use of nuclear weapons, something never mentioned or discussed by outside nations during the Trump administration in which could very well lead under the Biden administration's leadership to an all-out nuclear World War III can happen. We're not very far away from it, believe it or not. An economy that has been crippled by the biggest inflation we have seen in more than 60 years, and a military that I used to defeat ISIS in four weeks. They said it would take four years, four weeks to kill al-Baghdadi and Soleimani that has now gone woke at the top levels by trying to indoctrinate everyone down to the lowest-ranking patriot. But now they have really stepped up their efforts by indicting the 45th President of the United States, who received Seventy-five million votes, which is more than any sitting president in the history of our country.
And in the wings, they've got a local racist Democrat district attorney in Atlanta who is doing everything in her power to indict me over an absolutely perfect phone call, even more perfect than the one I made with the president of Ukraine. Remember, I kept, kept saying, that's a perfect call. This one was more perfect. <laughs> Nobody said, sir, you shouldn't say that. Many people on the phone were hung up in disgust because of something I inappropriately said. And by the way, is everybody warm enough? Are you sure? But this is South Carolina. We're used to nice, beautiful, warm weather. How about Joe when he's in Florida and he goes, it's really nice to be in New Hampshire. They got palm trees up. Or when he was in Ohio. No, how about Iowa? Well, actually the best. The best happened to be when he said last couple of days what he was saying about Ukraine and Iraq. But when he's in a certain state, many times he's gotten it wrong. It's wonderful to be in Iowa, sir, sir, sir. It's Idaho. Oh, Idaho. They grow potatoes in Idaho, right? No, we got a man who's grossly incompetent, and, and he could get us into World War III. And this will not be a war like army tanks going back and forth, shooting at each other. These are weapons so powerful, it's obliteration. He shouldn't be there. He shouldn't be there. Shouldn't be there for a lot of reasons, but he shouldn't be there just based on his competence. And tell him to take the cognitive test. That would be an interesting. Set a record for an all-time low. I took it. You know, they said, Trump is vicious, and he's brilliant, and he wants to take over the world, and that wasn't working. Then they said, Trump is this, Trump is that. Then they said, well, Trump's, let's see. Oh, he must be stupid. Oh, he's stupid. So when I heard that, I said, let me take the cognitive test, and I did given and administered by a whole lot of doctors. And Dr. Ronnie Jackson of Texas, who is now a congressman, was an admiral great. And as he said to everybody, Trump aced it. I aced it. I got him all right. And you know, I never heard the stupid stuff anymore. So that one disappeared. So I think Biden should take it. That way he can get rid of that. They can get rid of that little statement about him being not so Hello, everybody. I'm looking forward to an incredible town hall in beautiful Cedar Rapids, Iowa, with Sean Hannity. What a great guy. We'll be taking questions from Iowa caucus goers, talking about how we're going to end Joe Biden's inflation nightmare, stop the invasion of our southern border, defend our farmers, crush the deep state, and prevent World War III, because that's where we're headed. The war with Russia, Ukraine would never have happened. China would not be talking about Taiwan, they wouldn't be talking about it. They never did, and they are now. Bad things are happening for our country. We are really heading into possibly World War III. We have to make a change, and it has to be done fast. We have a man who's grossly incompetent as our president, and also the most corrupt president we've ever had. I hope you'll tune in, because we're going to have a great time. Thank you very much. I think the crooked Joe Biden is not only dumb and incompetent, I believe that he has gone mad a stark, raving lunatic with his horrible and country-threatening environmental open borders and DOJ, FBI weaponization policies. He is a mental catastrophe that is leading our country to hell. We'll end up in World War III because of this man, and for no reason whatsoever. Thank you. I'm the only candidate who can make this promise to you. I will prevent World War III. We're very close to World War III. And this won't be army tanks running against each other and shooting each other. This won't be airplanes flying in the air. These are weapons of mass destruction. These are weapons of destruction that the likes of which nobody has ever seen before. This will be an obliteration of the world. And I will stop that. And we never had a problem. You never read about it until recently. Everything is being done wrong. Everything is being said wrong. They don't know what they're doing. But we're very close to a world war. And if we have a world war, it'll be destruction like nobody's ever seen before, far greater than World War I or World War II, because the weaponry is so powerful, so horrible and powerful. I will stop the disaster known as Bidenomics, which stands for inflation, taxation, submission, and failure. <laughs> what it is.
tremendous inflation. You know, inflation, if you look at it over the years, I study — I went to the Wharton School of Finance, and I studied a lot of economies over the years. And when you look at inflation going back hundreds of years, any country that has inflation, inflation is a country killer. It destroys countries. You look at what happened with Germany. You look at what happened with numerous countries with rapid inflation, with big inflation. And look at what's happening to us now. You know, inflation is coming back very strong again. You look at the numbers that were just released yesterday. They don't know what to do. It's coming back very strong. I will regain energy independence as we had three years ago. <laughs> and achieve energy dominance as soon as — look, I mean, we had — we were going to be energy dominant within seven months, dominant. We had total energy independence. We were only taking our energy. I was filling up the National Reserves, got it full. Then he starts taking it. Now it's at the lowest level it's ever been because he wanted to get it for automobiles so that people would get a little bit cheaper gas so they could try and win an election. That's not what the purpose — the purpose of that is for war. The purpose for war — and it's almost down — it's almost dry right now. It's never been at a level like this. We'll take care of that. That's when our incompetent fool of a president will drop to his knees and beg a rent for mercy. Please, please. You ever hear the song, James Brown? Please, please, please. James called me Mr. Brown. But he'd say, please, Mr. Ayatollah, sir. This is Joe Biden talking. Please, Mr. Ayatollah, sir. I will give you everything. I will do anything you demand. Please, please don't hurt us. This is the position that this fool has put us in, and we're closer to World War III than we've ever been to any world war. Nobody ever thought a thing like this could happen, and we're closer than ever before. We have — we've never been — and I've been saying it for a long time. Did you ever see — Trump was right about everything on hats. I don't know who did the hats, but — but I have been right about most of it. And I don't want to be right about that, so I'm not going to make — but I tell you, we are close. We are close. It could happen. And we have a fool. We have an incompetent fool as our president that has no idea. This is nuclear weapons. These are weapons that are so massively destructive. It's obliteration. It's not two army tanks running at each other and shooting. Three years ago, under Trump, Iran was broke, had no nuclear weapons or even the, the prospect of a nuclear weapon. Biden has made Iran rich in a period of three years and has no idea what to do about it. And they are in a position where they're going to have weapons, and they're going to be big ones, too. Iran started the attack on Israel and desperately wants to become openly involved. Now, Biden refuses to admit that. Biden says, well, so far we haven't seen any evidence. Well, they're financing Hamas, and they're financing Hezbollah. They're giving them the money. They're giving them the training. They give — so he says they haven't — you know, he feels bad because somehow he's, like, in their pocket. He's in their pocket. But they go around saying, death to Israel, death to America, and they chant it openly all over the place. Don't let Iran have nuclear weapons. That's my only thing I have to tell you today. Don't let them have it. They would have never had them. We would have made a deal. They would have been satisfied. Everybody would have been satisfied. But then we had that corrupt election. Our country has never been so low or in such danger as it is right now. And don't feel too depressed as I talk to you, because we can bring it back. We've got to win the election. We'll bring it back stronger than ever before. Stronger than ever before. I didn't want to be too much of a downer here. I have to, I have to hit you with a little positivity, right? I've got to give you a little bit. We'll be stronger than ever, but we've got to win this election. It's a long time. You know, uh, you have yours on January 15th, the caucuses, but uh, we have a year, essentially a year to go. A year's a long time when you have incompetent and bad people and corrupt people running our country. But it's very simple. Joe Biden betrayed America and betrayed Israel. But as your president, I will stand with Israel 100 percent. Do we have to? We have to. And I kept Israel safe before. And then with four more years in the White House, I will defend the state of Israel like no one else can. Nobody else will be able to do that.
Look at what we did. We defeated ISIS. Remember when Hillary Clinton, I don't call her crooked anymore. I've given that term over to Biden. I don't know. I call her beautiful Hillary. She's a beautiful woman. Beautiful, beautiful Hillary. Remember when she was, he'll cause a war with his personality. No, my personality kept us out of war. We didn't have any wars. I was the first one in, I think they say 76 years. We won wars and we brought them back. We defeated ISIS. ISIS was supposedly going to be like four years to beat them. I did it in four weeks, less than four weeks. And we got 100 percent of the ISIS caliphate. I remember when I got, I was at 99 percent in the media, the fake news back. Then. Ooh, that's a lot of news. It's a lot of fake news. But they were saying, uh, don't, uh, he's leaving before he completes the task. I said, can Russia, can Iran, can Iraq, which, by the way, is sort of Iran, if you want to know the truth, another great move by a certain politician who probably ranks right up there with — nobody ranks, by the way, close to the one we have now. But we've had some pretty bad ones. I'll tell you, the happiest president in history right now is Jimmy Carter, because I would say he was a brilliant president by comparison to Crooked Joe Biden. I would say Jimmy Carter was a magnificent, brilliant. He was George Washington compared to this guy. But he's a happy man. That's good. When I'm back at the Oval Office, we will cut off every penny of money that we send to the Palestinians and the terrorists on day one. We will fully support Israel in defeating, dismantling, and permanently destroying the terrorist group known as Hamas. And under my leadership, we not only imposed crushing sanctions on Iran, we unlocked American energy to drastically cut oil prices. You know, we had oil so low that it didn't make sense for Russia. Russia would have never gone into Ukraine anyway. I don't care how high it was. I had a, a very good relationship with Putin, which the press hates to hear, you know. But it's nice to have good relationships with people that can uh, cause lots of problems. But we had a very good relationship with a lot of them. And I'll, I'll tell you, there was no way he would have done it. And I told him, I said, you can't do it. If you do it, it's going to be hell to pay. You're going to have, you're going to be hit so hard. And uh, no, no, no. I said, no, you will. I told him, I won't tell you what I said, but I told him. And again, we got along, but I said, listen, you know, we have a good relationship, but we're going to hit you so hard. And here's the thing. I told him what we we're going to do. And he said, no way. I said, way. He said, no way. I said, way again. And he didn't believe me, okay? He didn't believe me, but he believed me 10 percent. Brad, he believed me 10 percent. That's all you need, right? So uh, 10 percent was fine. He would have never gone in. And he wasn't. And by the way, he didn't go in. We went four years. He didn't go in. And uh, then I think what happened is he saw the gross incompetence of a good withdrawal. I got it down to 2,500 troops from, you know, many, many times that. And we were going to withdraw with dignity and with strength and with respect. I spoke to the head of the Taliban, Abdul. I said, still the head. I said, Abdul, you're killing our soldiers. Don't do it anymore. We're going to hit you so hard. You're not even going to believe it. But why? But why? Do you send me a picture of my, my home? I said, well, I will tell you. We'll have to discuss that someday. We'll have to discuss. But they were, from that time, we went 18 months without a soldier being shot at or killed. Not even shot at. 18 months. We're getting along just fine. And then when this clown came in, they had a field day. They just had a field day. But we went 18 months, no soldier killed, no soldier even shot at. And they were knocking them off like you wouldn't believe. They were killing our soldiers and others uh, under the Obama administration of which Biden was a piece of it. He'd go to all these countries, you know, he was going to all these countries with with his son. At some point, does this thing not work with the son, right? You know, at some point you say, look, this son thing isn't working out very well. But he'd go with Hunter to all these countries. He visited them, and I guess they did numbers. But it was very sad to see and to read, and you see it going on right now at levels that you wouldn't believe. But three years ago, we were energy independent. We were energy dominant within four or five months. We were going to sell oil to Europe and all parts of the world. We we're going to pay off our debt. We were going to reduce your taxes. You know, I gave you the largest tax cut in history, bigger than Ronald Reagan's tax cut. Gave you the largest regulation cuts. 
But now we'd have the energy future would never be hostage to hostile foreign powers. We, we didn't need it. We didn't have to worry about that. But Biden surrendered to Iran. Now, you've got a lot of them. I see a lot of them. To every American who is petrified that Joe Biden's catastrophic weakness will bring our country to ruin, I make you this promise. As your president, I will restore peace through strength. And yes, I will prevent World War III. We are very close to World War III, and we will prevent it. I know all the players. I know the players. I know the good ones, the bad ones, the weak ones. You know, there's a very powerful player, Viktor Orban. Did anybody ever hear of Viktor Orban? He's the head of Hungary. Hungary fronts on both Ukraine and Russia. And they went to him about two weeks ago. They said, what would you recommend that you he's interviewed? A very powerful man. Uh, his country runs incredibly well. He doesn't allow illegals into his country. He put barbed wire fences all over. He has soldiers every 10 yards. He's got a soldier standing. Nobody came in. And he said he doesn't want his country blown up or destroyed. I mean, you know, it sounds. But he's a very smart, very respected person, very tough guy. They said, what would you do? I would like to know. This is during an interview. What would you do to tell President Biden? What can he do to make things better? Because the whole world is blowing up. He said, I tell him to do two things. Number one is resign. And number two is put Trump in charge again. Because under Trump, for four years, we had world peace. And he's the only one that's going to be able to do it. So that was very nice. That was very nice. It's true. We had total peace, four years. You know, I talk, uh, I was with a group yesterday, a great group in Nevada, and we had a fantastic evening, actually. A very religious group also, very religious people, great people. And we were talking about different things. And I said to them, our security was so incredible. I have the Trump ban, you know, the Trump travel ban. Everybody killed me on that, the Trump travel ban because it sounds a little nasty, but no, I don't want people coming in from certain countries where it's so bad and they're blowing each other up and they're killing each other and they want to now come and they want to teach us how their country runs. We don't need that. We don't want to be taught. To every American who is terrified that Joe Biden's catastrophic weakness will bring our country to ruin and it's closer than it's ever been. I believe it's closer than ever to ruin. I believe it's closer than ever to World War III. And I will stop World War III. You will not have World War III. I can tell you that. And I make this promise to you as president, we will restore peace through strength on the earth, beyond on the earth. Victor Orban said the other day, the only way that this world is going to be solved, he's a very strong man, as you know, from Hungary. And he's the boss. There's no doubt about it. He actually asked me for my endorsement, and I gave it to him. I said, what do you need it for? He says, because I like to win by a lot. And, and he did. But he said, uh, they asked him a question at an interview, and they said, what would you recommend to, to Biden? And he said that I recommend that he resign immediately and put Trump in his place, because during Trump, there were no problems. China respected us. Russia respected us. Everybody respected us. Under my presidency, our country was very, very feared and very, very respected. Feared is not a nice word, but we were feared. Greatest military in the world. You saw what we did. For four straight years, I kept America safe. I kept Israel safe, and I kept the world safe. The world was a safer place, a much safer place. Today, the world is... Today, the world is blowing up all around, no matter where you look. If I were president, the attack on Israel would never, ever, have happened. I think you believe that, right? I think you believe that. Ukraine would never have happened. Inflation would never have happened. The most embarrassing moment in our history, the inept withdrawal, the way they withdrew, not the fact that they were getting out. I had them all set to move. We were going to move out with dignity and strength, and we were going to take our equipment, and we were going to take our Americans with us, and we weren't going to have 13 people killed. Great soldiers, great, beautiful, young soldiers. I got to know all of the parents. And we weren't going to have 38 people wounded so badly, their lives are shattered, just shattered. The legs, the arms, the face obliterated. We weren't going to have any of that. We we're going to walk out with power and strength and dignity, and we were going to get out 
that we were going to keep Bagram, the Air Force Base, the big Air Force Base, because it was one hour away from where China makes its nuclear weapons, but they lost that too. And right now, you know who occupies it? China occupies it. And we would not have open borders where countries are emptying out their prisons, mental institutions, and sending record numbers of terrorists for which we will someday be paying a very big price unless you elect Donald J. Trump. I'm not going to pay a price. Before I came into office, the World Trade Center in New York City was obliterated. The Middle East was in flames. ISIS had a caliphate spanning 20,000 square miles. That's a big area. Europe was being massacred by jihadist lunatics. Syria was in a civil war. Libya was a horror show. Yemen was a nightmare. Our allies were alienated and just terrible. They couldn't even talk to us. They wouldn't want to talk to us. Iran was coasting toward a nuclear bomb, and it was flush with cash like they had never seen before. And they were funding Hezbollah and Hamas. They were funding them. They were funding Hamas. They were giving them so much money all of a sudden. But in a few short years after I got there, I reversed every single disaster Obama and Biden created. And it wasn't easy. But it was easier than I thought. We totally demolished 100 percent of the ISIS territorial caliphate. And I was told that couldn't be done. I was told that would take at least four to five years and we couldn't do it. We did it in four months. I just want to let you know we have a great military, great generals, the real generals, not the ones you see on television, the real ones, the ones that want to fight, the non-woke generals. We killed the founder and the leader of ISIS. You remember they were looking for him for years and years before I got there. Al-Baghdadi, we killed him. He was gone. We eliminated the world's top terrorists, the most brutal terrorists of them all, the Iranian butcher, Soleimani. We, we eliminated him. Uh, he's the father of the roadside bomb. Whenever you see a soldier or civilian or anybody without the legs, without the arms, he's the one. He caused 94 percent of it, they say. He, was, uh, he loved those roadside bombs. That's what he loved. And uh, he's not with us any longer. Just as I promised, I withdrew from the horrendous Iran nuclear deal. Unfortunately, they didn't do anything with it. They didn't do anything with it. It was supposed to be. I thought it was my greatest gift to Israel. The problem is this administration did absolutely nothing. They just let them go and make. They would have never, ever been even close. I mean, they are very close to having a nuclear weapon. Remember Kim Jong-un? We got along with him. Everything was good. If Hillary Clinton got in, you would have had a nuclear war. I got in, and everything was fine. But dealing with Iran is going to be a very big problem. And frankly, North Korea right now is a very big problem also. You see what's happening there. He's not liking this group of people. I imposed crippling oil sanctions on Iran and crushed their resources to a level that nobody ever thought possible. And the funding from terror, they had 70, million, 70 billion, think of this, in the bank. And when I left, they were broke. They were stone cold broke. China, don't buy. None of you buy. They were desperate to make a deal. We would have had a deal within one week after the election if the election weren't rigged. We would have had a deal one week after that election. And we did that through strength, not through weakness. But Crooked Joe, surrendered my tough sanctions almost immediately, and Iran now has much more than $100 billion to finance terror all over the world, including the United States and certainly including Israel. As president, I withdrew from the anti-American, anti-Israel, anti-Semitic UN Human Rights Council. Withdrew. And while others talk about stopping funding for Hamas and the Palestinian Authority. I actually did it. I stopped. I said, wait a minute. You just said death to America, didn't you? You said death. Remember, they came into Washington to meet me. They went back. I thought it was a nice meeting, to be honest. They were very nice. And then they went back. I said, they couldn't have. That's not the same group I left. They went back and they said, death to America, death to Israel. 
So I said, really, we stopped immediately funding the 700 million. That moment, I said, stop funding them. And uh, we did, immediately. They leave and they say, death to America, and then we pay. And by the way, they were saying it for years, and people just kept paying them $742 million a year. It's a lot of money. After death, I was the only president in decades who didn't start a war. Instead, I got us out of wars and endless wars. And one of the wars I got us out of was a war against ISIS. We defeated ISIS. It was supposed to take four years, and I got it done in four weeks. Would you say that's good? Because we have the greatest military on Earth. We have the greatest leaders, but not the guys on television. Not the ones on television. I'm the only candidate who can make this promise to you. I will prevent World War III. I will prevent World War III. Because our country has never been so unsafe. You know, you're talking about the power of weaponry today compared to the Second World War and the First World War. It's uh, times a thousand uh, most powerful weapons ever even thought about, ever conceived, ever built. And we can't have a world war. And we're closer to World War III today than we've ever been at any time in our history, and the word nuclear is being thrown around every single day. When I was president, we didn't talk about nuclear. You couldn't talk about it. It was a word that was banned. You couldn't talk. Now they talk about it every day. We talk about it. They talk about it. And uh, we will keep you out of World War III. World War III is not going to be army tanks going back and forth, shooting at each other. Boom, boom. An airplane having a little fight in the sky. This is uh, the big stuff. And if it's going to be total obliteration, we cannot have World War III. We will keep you out of it, and we'll keep you out of it because of strength, because of the strength.